Garland Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I am going to be playing without a plan. Now, that's not something that's new for me, but it's something that helps me a great deal to keep me in a playful mood. Because what that means is I have no expectations. Since I don't have any idea where I'm going, I don't have to worry about getting there, if that makes sense. What I'm going to do is use something that was left over from another project, something left on my counter, and frequently there are things left around like that, so I often have something that I can grab and start playing with. But once I start playing with this, I really don't know where it's going to go. I'm just going to absolutely trust and enjoy the play. Well, here's what I found on my counter. And this photocopy of an old photo, so it's not the original, that I'm gluing down here, I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I just know I want to play with her in the art journal, so I am going to glue her down. And without a plan, I'm going to see where it ends up going. Now, the whole point of this for me is to not have any plans, to not have any expectation of what's going to happen to it. I do know that I want some color on her, so I'm going to bring in the gelatos. Now, to give her the rest of her body, I could have done this with a pencil and been very meticulous and careful about it, but instead, I decided to just go right into it with the gelato. And as I'm doing this, I'm even going to give her her arm back. And clearly, by my incredible technique here, I mean, the precision, the realism, the figure drawing that I've got going on here, I mean, clearly, I am classically trained. Not. This is so just playing around, and so she's going to end up with a very strange body shape. Notice her arm and how it ends before her waist kind of thing. Yeah, her proportions, they're just not right, but we won't go into that. Now I'm going to grab some white paint and smear that around. And what was my very technical reason for grabbing that white paint? I really like how paint feels on my hands and I wanted to do that. And then I'm going to start adding more color here and there. There's no great master plan here. I'm just playing. After I do one thing, then I decide what I'm going to do next. And by doing it that way, I don't have a plan. I don't have a set of expectations that are going to get in my way and frustrate me. Now what I'm using there is something called a Pico embellisher because I want to write on the wet paint. I don't want to wait for paint to dry. And if I'm going to write on something wet, I've got to use something that isn't going to be completely ruined by wet paint, like say, a normal pen. That would be totally ruined by wet paint. And speaking of ruining things with a wet paint, that uh, gray that's on there from the Pico embellisher, it's not totally dry yet, but I'm still going to pop the stencil down right on top of it. And if I don't slide the stencil around too much, I shouldn't end up smearing too much of that gray. And I'm going to grab some Amsterdam acrylic paint here, and I'm going to take a cosmetic sponge, and it's very, very juicy because I'm very, very impatient, which means that some of the paint is probably going to run underneath the stencil. Doesn't bother me a bit as nothing's that precise on this page anyway. And if you head on over to the blog at colorfuljourney.com, I'll have links to everything, including this stencil, which I designed for Stencil Girl products called Alternating Diamonds. And it's really easy to see through it, so that way I can stencil right up to her, but not actually stenciling over her face. Well, not enough color involved here, so I'm going to bring a little more of the orange in. And this is really just my excuse to have more stuff being smeared around by my fingers, because I really like getting my fingers into the mess. Well, now it's time for some more precision. I am going to paint in those diamonds. And by the way, I am using a paintbrush to dig into my tube of paint. And that's because I'm at the very end of that tube. What I'm doing is using that brush to get every last little drop of paint out of that tube because why waste the rainbow? Now, as I'm painting all this stuff in, notice nothing is dry. That means some things might smear. So if it does, I'm just going to call it an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. And you can probably see one of the early triangles, triangles, diamonds that I did, see if I know my shapes anymore, had a bunch of the teal kind of smeared in with it. Well, to bring in some more pattern, I've grabbed this stencil called Doodle It Bigger by Maria McGuire, also available over at Stencil Girl Products, and that's going to give me some pattern on the bottom. But the hardest part for me at this point was trying to pick which color I wanted. I ended up going with this very, very bright lime green that I love from Liquitex. Got that good old cosmetic sponge again. Now I'm going to fiddle for the exact perfect placement of these circles. Like, like anything on this page is perfect, but yes, for some reason I really wanted to get those lined up just the way I wanted. And then I'm just going to put a whole bunch of paint on them. Now as I'm grabbing the paint, I ended up grabbing, oops, a bunch of the teal there. So, you know what? It's an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. That got me to use more of the green paint. Now I'm going to take the stencil and just line up one of the circles, and then I can finish the pattern all the way across the page 
Now, as I'm doing this, there's no master plan to this. I don't know where it's going, so I'm really following some impulses, and writing with these uh, Pico embellishers is just a lot of fun. One of the things I love about them is that I don't really have to wait for paint to dry. I can just write on top of wet stuff. Well, I must have been thinking about the Smurfs, because instead of putting a little blue there, I decided to cover her whole face in blue. So now, she's Smurfette. And that white space, we all know it is not going to be white space much longer. But I got to tell you, that wasn't really the color that I wanted there. Now, how do I know it was the one I didn't want there? Because as soon as I did it, I went, oops, I didn't like it at all. But that's okay. It's just an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. So I'm just going to start doing more stuff to it until I'm happy with it. And yeah, this layer didn't do it yet. So another layer that's an oops. Now, I could wait until this layer was dry and then start adding more to it, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to stop playing, so I'm just going to work on it while it's wet. And I still got to say, mm, still not liking it, still calling an oops. What is that, layer number three that's an oops on this? Well, now I'm going to try and use my yellow paintbrush that's pretty much dried out because I left it sitting out there the whole time I've been playing, and maybe I should have put that in water, but nah, it's working well enough. And I put some more yellow on it, and guess what? Yep. It's an oops. Still not where I want it to be. Somehow this is an opportunity. Just don't know what it is yet. And since I don't have any expectations of this page, it's much easier for me to keep myself playing rather than being frustrated that it isn't turning out the way that I wanted. Because frankly, at this rate, I'm not sure how many layers it's going to take for me to get that one area a way that I like it. Well, when in doubt, put some words on it. So I grabbed my wall of word stencil. I've got some black paint that I'm putting out there and I am just going to take a cosmetic sponge and I'm going to stencil those words down. Now, one of the things that you can do when you're stenciling, if you're not sure you've gotten it everywhere that you want it to go, is if you hold the stencil in place, you can actually kind of lift it up and see how it is and then just put it right back in the same spot and keep stenciling. So that's what I'm going to keep doing checking here. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video and would like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know every time I have a new video out. And of course, I've got all sorts of goodies over on my blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Things like a free workshop called Permission to Play that is all about, you guessed it, play. Now, since I've turned her blue in the face, I've just felt like she's had all this creativity just kind of bursting out of her. Something about having a blue face that says that to me. So I have taken the words Untamed Creativity off of my Finding Your Tribe stencil and put that right at the bottom. Now, I could leave things just as they are, but then, no, I want an excuse to do some more doodling and drawing on this. And so I've got that Pico embellisher, and I'm actually going to attempt to give her some arms. And maybe even, I, you know, this might be crazy here, attempt some hands for her. And so I'm going to keep drawing on this, but the paint is wet. I've got the gelatos on there. And so what's happening is, is I'm actually sending paint and gelato up into the, the dispenser, the, the tube, the tip, tip, there's the word, the tip of the Pico embellisher. And when that happens, all you have to do is poke the pin that's in a cap through it again, and that unclogs it. But now I'm going to start messing with her face. I thought just a few accents, because yeah, that'll work. And um, no, not so much. But luckily, all you do is put your finger on it, and you can dab it right up. So it's very forgiving. If you have an oops with this, and you sort of make an odd little face to her, then you can simply wipe it away. And I'll just keep messing with it, because you know what? What's the worst thing that happens, right? She ends up with, well, a black eye, or a black nose, or, you know, that kind of thing. And that'll just give her more character, right? Now, after I've done that for a little while, and decided maybe I shouldn't bruise her up, I'm going to work on those arms to really make those stand out. I'm actually going to lengthen them so that she doesn't have these odd proportions and we'll actually get the arm to go past her waist. And then she's got, of course, those weird little squiggly line handy things. And I'm going to finish this page up with a little more Pico embellisher. Of course, using that incredible precision, those mathematically correct and precise lines. Yeah, no, just very loose and scribbly. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's Play in the Art Journal. If you've been enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you know of somebody that you think would enjoy a little more play in their day, I'd so appreciate it if you shared this video with them. And if you'd like a little more play, head on over to that blog, get signed up for my newsletter, and there will be a free video and PDF on its way to you. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.